Hello, and welcome to Use a Web Videos. Today, we're discussing a recent and alarming health announcement from Colorado regarding a rare human case of the bubonic plague. The Colorado health officials confirmed this case, reminding us that the plague, often associated with medieval times, is still present in today's world, though rare. We'll dive into the details of this case, historical context, symptoms, treatment, and precautions you can take to protect yourself. On Tuesday, health officials in Pueblo County, Colorado, announced the verification of a bubonic plague case in one individual. The case was identified based on early test findings, and the source of the infection is currently under investigation. This news may come as a shock, as the bubonic plague, known for causing the Black Death in the Middle Ages, seems like a distant threat. However, the bacteria responsible for the plague, Yersinia pestis, still exists in wild rodents and can occasionally infect humans. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, reports that between 1970 and 2022, there were 67 confirmed cases of plague in Colorado. Globally, the World Health Organization documented 3,248 instances of the human plague from 2010 to 2015, with the majority of cases occurring in Madagascar, Peru, and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Although these numbers are small, they highlight the continued presence of the disease. Humans can contract the plague through flea bites, contact with infected animals, or inhaling droplets from an infected person's cough. The plague manifests in three main forms, bubonic, septicemic, and pneumonic. The bubonic form is the most common and occurs when bacteria multiply in the lymph nodes, causing painful swellings, called buboes. The septicemic form occurs when bacteria enter the bloodstream, and the pneumonic form, the most deadly, affects the lungs and can spread directly between people. Symptoms of the plague include sudden fever, chills, intense headache, muscle aches, nausea, vomiting, and painful, enlarged lymph nodes. In more severe cases, the skin and tissue can turn black due to the septicemic form, and breathing difficulties, chest pain, and coughing are associated with the pneumonic form. The CDC advises seeking medical assistance immediately if these symptoms appear as early treatment with antibiotics can significantly improve recovery chances. In the United States, other plague cases have been reported this year. In March, a man in New Mexico died from the plague, and in February, Oregon reported its first case in nearly a decade. These cases serve as reminders that the plague is not just a historical ailment, but a current health concern that requires vigilance. To reduce the risk of infection, health officials recommend removing brush, rock piles, garbage, and timber piles from around homes and recreational areas to prevent attracting wild rodents. Additionally, Treating pets for fleas and avoiding letting them roam in rodent areas can further reduce the risk. Storing pet food in rodent-proof containers is also advised. Currently, there is no vaccine for the plague available in the United States, although new vaccines are in development. Therefore, preventive measures and early treatment are crucial. The Pueblo Department of Public Health and Environment emphasized the importance of protecting oneself and pets from plague and seeking prompt medical attention if symptoms arise. This case in Colorado is a stark reminder of the plague's persistence and the need for continued awareness and precautionary measures. While the plague is treatable with antibiotics if detected early, it remains a potentially deadly disease. 
Public health officials continue to monitor and investigate these cases to prevent further spread and ensure public safety. Now, let's address some common questions about the bubonic plague. What causes the bubonic plague? The bubonic plague is caused by the bacterium Yersinia pestis, which is spread by fleas and can infect humans through bites, contact with infected animals, or inhaling infected droplets. How common is the plague today? While rare, the plague still exists in parts of the world. In the United States, there are a few cases reported each year, primarily in the southwestern states. What are the symptoms of the bubonic plague? Symptoms include sudden fever, chills, intense headache, muscle aches, nausea, vomiting, and painful, enlarged lymph nodes, buboes. Is the plague treatable? Yes, the plague is treatable with antibiotics especially if treatment begins within 24 hours of symptom onset. Can the plague spread from person to person? The pneumonic form of the plague can spread directly between people through respiratory droplets. How can I protect myself from the plague? Avoiding contact with wild rodents, treating pets for fleas, and maintaining clean surroundings can help reduce the risk of infection. Is there a vaccine for the plague? Currently, there is no vaccine for the plague available in the United States, although new vaccines are in development. What should I do if I suspect I have the plague? Seek medical assistance immediately if you experience symptoms of the plague. Early treatment with antibiotics is crucial. What precautions should pet owners take? Pet owners should treat their pets for fleas, avoid letting them roam in rodent areas, and store pet food in rodent-proof containers. How does the plague compare to other infectious diseases? While the plague is rare compared to many other infectious diseases, it remains a serious health concern due to its potential severity and historical impact. In conclusion, the recent case of bubonic plague in Colorado serves as a reminder of the persistent threat of this ancient disease. Although treatable, the plague can be deadly if not detected and treated promptly. Public health measures, awareness, and early intervention are key to preventing and controlling outbreaks. As we navigate modern health challenges, understanding and respecting the historical context of diseases like the plague helps us appreciate the progress made in medicine and public health. For more updates on health news and other trending topics, be sure to follow UseWeb videos. Stay informed, stay safe, and we'll see you in the next video.